Welcome back to the channel, y'all. This is the number one and original Living in Galveston, Texas channel. My team and I work diligently to put out content you want to see. So if you're looking to make a move or maybe you just want to know the red flags to look for when buying new construction, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button, click that little bell, and you will never miss another video episode. Today, we're diving into the red flags of home ownership. Buying a home is a worldwide obsession and a rite of passage for many of us. Home ownership helps build wealth and stability for you and your family. So we thought you should know about the top red flags to look for when buying a new construction home. We're gonna be diving into the exciting world of new construction. Buying a brand new home is an amazing experience. Do you remember your first new car? Well, it's kind of like that. That new car smell, nobody's ever sat in the seats or even driven it. It has all the bells and whistles, and heck, some of those bells and whistles have bells and whistles for their bells and whistles. You know, it's crucial to keep an eye out for these red flags that could make your dream home a nightmare. So let's get started and explore my top red flags to keep an eye out for when purchasing a new construction home. Starting with a lack of clear explanation regarding home warranties. When a builder fails to provide a clear and comprehensive explanation of what their warranties covers, it should raise suspicion. You know, a reputable builder should be transparent about what the structural systems, workmanship, appliances, and cosmetic warranties cover, the duration and limitations, or even exclusion. Past experience tells us if the details of the warranties are vague or ambiguous, maybe they don't even want to provide it up front, this could signal potential issues with after closing support. Does it give you an idea that there may be a lack of commitment in addressing these future issues by their ambiguity now? You really want to insist on the detailed explanation of the warranty terms before proceeding with the purchase to avoid any unpleasant surprises later. Everybody wants the biggest bang for the buck. I get it, whether it's dinner, a pair of boots, a car, or a home. If the builder's pricing seems unusually lower than that others in the marketplace, this should raise a concern. I know it may seem like an incredibly great deal and it may be enticing and the pricing significantly lower than the competitors. Think about it this way though. It could indicate the use of inferior quality materials, lack of proper credentials, or even potential scam tactics. Quality craftsmanship and quality materials, they come at a certain price. So a drastically low estimate could be a warning sign that corners are being cut. You want to work with builders with the expertise to deliver a high standard product. Always, always, always investigate the builder thoroughly. You really want to be cautious of deals that really seem just too good to be true. You know the old saying, my grandmother must have said it a thousand times when I was growing up. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. And you know she was right about everything and this really is no different. Now, this one's really pretty easy. Check out the builder's reputation through social media and online presence. You can Google just about anyone or anything these days. It is really crucial that if you come across numerous complaints, you know, consistently negative reviews regarding the builder's work or communication or adherence to a timeline or quality of materials or service after the sale. All of these things are major red flags. You know, a reputable builder should have a majority of positive reviews and experiences online. I gotta tell you though, anonymous people behind a computer screen, they can really be quite hateful. I don't think it would be uncommon to see a few negative comments, but if you do see an overwhelming number of dissatisfied customers, this can indicate a pattern of issues that may affect your experience with that builder. So always consider the overall sentiment and experience as an important factor in your decision-making process. Ask the builder where you could see other homes they've built. I want you to drive by, examine the condition of the homes that were constructed by the builder several years ago. This could provide valuable insight. If you notice that properties built by the same builder, I don't know, three, five, 
10 years ago. If you go look at a home built by a builder a decade ago or more, and they're showing signs of significant wear and tear, structural issues, or maintenance problems, this should be a concerning red flag. If the builder's track record of constructing homes that don't withstand the test of time, this could indicate subpar construction quality or even materials. This might impact the longevity and durability of your prospective new home. I can't stress this enough. Really research the builder's track record. Check reviews, ask for references, and make sure you check out their previous projects. If you find a history of delayed construction, poor craftsmanship, and or a lot of dissatisfied customers, it might be a sign for you to run as fast as you can. I really just can't stress this one enough, y'all. In any transaction, whether it's real estate or not, transparency is key with me. If the builder is hesitant on disclosing information like materials, construction timelines, or cost, it could indicate potential issues down the line. So you always wanna ask for specifics and make sure you get that in writing. Transparency is extremely important for me when I purchase anything, especially a new construction home. Now I'm talking about the transparency between me and the builder's rep and the transparency between me and the buyer. Really, wouldn't you wanna be aware of any issues or problems or delays that might be going on at the construction site up front rather than finding it out after the fact? Y'all, I'm a problem solver and I like working as a team. If there's a challenge on the construction site that does cause a delay, why not bring it up to the buyer right away so we can all find a solution together? This is such a pet peeve of mine and it is frustrating to everyone involved. Whether it's your frame walkthrough or your final walkthrough, you really, really, really want to pay attention to the details. Sloppy paint jobs, uneven floors, really poorly installed fixtures, all of these could be indicators of rushed or low quality work. I don't hesitate to address these concerns and issues directly with the builder before finalizing the deal. I always make notes of everything we discuss in the framing walkthrough as well as the third party inspection and the final walkthrough. That way we have a detailed recap and the builder has it in writing. We want to keep the builder accountable for all of those repairs. Goodness y'all, I've conducted a framing walkthrough with my buyers where we'd be walking through the home in the framing stage with the superintendent and we realized that they were supposed to convert the loft into a bedroom and it was literally missing the framing for the walls, the closet, and the doorways. So it's really important to address these structural issues up front at the framing stage. You don't wanna wait until the drywall and the paint's up. This will surely cause delays. As you get closer to that final walkthrough, it could be a problem and it will delay closing. Now, I want you to look out for unexpected costs too. You know, when you buy a new car, there's always these vague add-ons. It's the same with new homes. Sometime a builder may present a base price. Now, this base price is not gonna include essential upgrades, additional fees for permit, landscaping, utilities. Please make sure that you get a clear breakdown of all the potential builder costs or expenses up front. Now, I always remind my buyers when you're purchasing a new construction home, what's advertised online or out on that sign in the neighborhood, that's just the base price and the starting price of the smallest floor plan. Now, what they're gonna add on top of that, it's gonna be your lot premium, structural upgrades like that bonus bedroom I was talking about, appliances, washer dryer, mini blinds, the buyer may offer different design packages and either building from the ground up or in an inventory home, you may see an add-on for maybe a more luxurious finish package that may upgrade the flooring or the countertops or the window coverings or the light fixtures. One more thing to know is that if your lot comes fully sodded and it has a basic landscaping package, if your backyard comes unfinished, and it literally is a dirt lot. You may need to allocate a certain amount of your budget to make sure you finish your backyard within a time frame based on the HOA regulations of that particular new construction community. 
Now this is a big one. If you are building from the ground up or buying new construction, I want you to hire a third party inspector. You want the inspector to see if the original plan, is there anything missing or altered changes in the build versus the plan that happened without your consent? Y'all, this would be a huge major red flag. Please always review the blueprint and the floor plans thoroughly with the builder and have the third party inspector review the plans through the stages of the final construction all the way to the final walkthrough. You want to ensure that all the modifications and alterations are communicated and approved by you as the buyer. Please remember it's also important to document it and have it in writing. Coming from personal experience, I've never had a buyer experience this alteration in their floor plan without their consent. But I have had builders who've offered complimentary upgrades to my buyers due to material shortage delays. So let me give you an example. My clients opted out from upgrading their appliance package because they just felt like it was too pricey for them. Well, as we got closer to closing, the standard appliance package, well, it hadn't arrived and it appeared to be on back order well after my client's closing. Of course, the builder wanted to close this particular home for my buyer within a certain time frame. So the builder agreed to provide them with a complimentary upgrade on an appliance package that was ready, readily available at no cost to them. So really y'all, it was a win-win for everyone. Communication is so important. Wouldn't you agree? Communication really is vital throughout the whole new construction building process. I gotta tell you, if the builder is unresponsive, evasive, or fails to keep you updated on all the progress and doesn't provide weekly updates, it could really lead to misunderstandings and delays. I work with many builders and sales consultants throughout Galveston County, and there are some builders and there are some consultants that they are really, really good at communicating, and there are some that are, well, just not so much. The entire team has got to be in communication. The builder rep, the construction superintendent, the buyer, the realtor, the inspector, and yes, the title company. So for me as the buyer's agent, it's very important for me to be on top of the communication. I wanna make sure my buyers get weekly updates on their new home construction process. Now, if we don't hear from the builder for whatever reason, it's my responsibility to follow up with them and see how things are going. I usually request the builder to send weekly photo text updates and a text thread. This makes it easy to communicate and we can all see the progress of what's going on within the new construction building process and all ask questions. This is another big one, y'all. I want you to be very wary of an overly optimistic timeline. I want you to know delays could, maybe, and probably will happen in new construction. If you run into a builder promising an unrealistically fast completion timeline, they may be cutting corners or compromising the quality of this new construction home. It really varies based on the builder, but the standard timeline of a new construction home here in Galveston County ranges from about six to nine months, and some custom builders are taking 12, 16, 18 months. If you know this time frame is the industry standard going in and a builder promises delivery of a construction home in let's say less than four months, wouldn't you be worried? Well, you should be. Wouldn't you start questioning why your new construction home is gonna be completed so much faster than the industry standard? I want you to review the legal documents meticulously with your buyer's agent. I like to take the time to sit down with my buyers and we go through the very thick purchase agreement section by section. If my buyers are out of town and not available, we can do a Zoom or conference call. We can go over each section page by page to ensure you understand the terms, the coverage, and any potential liabilities before signing the purchase agreement. In new construction, I always recommend consulting a real estate attorney. This might be wise to avoid any legal pitfalls. The section that I really focus on is the cancellation terms. It's really important for my buyers to understand how much time they have to change their mind. If the builder shows hesitation or reluctance to postpone the closing until all promised repairs or outstanding issues are addressed, 
That's a red flag, y'all. A reputable builder should prioritize in completing all the requests for repairs and address any issues before the closing date. Refusal to accommodate this request could signal a lack of commitment in delivering a fully furnished and satisfactory home. There should be a system in place with the construction superintendent and the builder's rep to resolving these issues before you finalize the deal. To avoid any complications after closing for me, I highly recommend my buyers to delay closing if the repairs or issues are not addressed before the closing date. Y'all, I had a sweet young couple whose timelines were oh so tight. They were on a very specific timeline. Their lease was up, the landlord had a new lease signed, and the wife was about to deliver their first child, a precious baby boy, Lucas. So they had a specific move-in date where they had to accept some repairs that were gonna be done post-closing by the builder. I just wanna be totally honest with you here. It was not all sunshine and roses either. Those post-closing repairs not only took days, not weeks, not months, many months, over a year to complete. Y'all, it's not a good feeling. You are paying for a 100% finished home. You have a signed agreement that the home would be 100% ready and delivered at closing. Wouldn't you want a 100% finished home? You surely don't want a home where there's outstanding repairs and issues. But the fact of the matter is you may not have that flexibility. I highly recommend my buyers to give themselves a little cushion just in case there is a delay, just in case the closing is delayed so that you have that leverage if you close you don't have that leverage to negotiate with these builders. I absolutely understand all the excitement of closing on a new home. It is absolutely exciting to move into your brand new home. But I want you to be aware that if the builder's pushing you to close early, pushing the closing process may indicate an attempt to cover up unfinished work or unresolved issues. Take the necessary time to thoroughly inspect the property before closing to ensure everything meets your expectations and the agreed upon standards. Don't let the pressure to close prematurely lead to overlooking potential problems that could arise later. And y'all, I've saved the best for last. Always, 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 did I mention always? Insist on a third party inspection it is a crucial step in ensuring the quality of your new construction home. If the builder hesitates or outright refuses an independent inspection, this is a huge red flag. I'm waving it big. A reputable builder should welcome the scrutiny as it demonstrates their confidence in the quality of their work. Refusal could signal potential issues that they don't want uncovered, making it essential to reconsider your options or negotiate this point firmly. I highly recommend to all my buyers purchasing a new construction home or a resale home to hire an inspector to conduct a third party inspection. If there's a pushback from that builder, once you question why and what are they hiding and why they not want you to have that third party inspector, the third party inspector is hired by you, the buyer, and he or she the inspector will put together an inspection report which we will review and then I as the buyer's agent will forward to the builder and we want to make sure that all the repairs in the summary section are addressed and resolved before closing. Once those repairs are completed, we'll send the inspector back out for a reinspection to make sure that all those repairs were done professionally. The big items and the things that you want to look out for that you're probably not too familiar are those things that you can't easily see. And that may be your insulation to add it, making sure it's up to code, lifted, cracked, or broken tiles on the roof, tankless water heater, HVAC system, your plumbing, your electrical, including your GFCI outlets and your breakers. You can't believe what I see in these inspection report summaries. One important item that I always look out for is the insulation in the attic. There are so many builders cutting corners and not doing the installation properly. Now, if it's not installed properly, this is gonna cost my buyers, my new homeowners, 
a lot more money in the long run because their home is not as energy efficient. Now that's a big red flag for me. So when I see an inspection report where the builder doesn't have the attic insulated to code, that's a big no, no, no for me. Y'all, I always keep these kinds of things in my mind when I'm suggesting a particular builder for a buyer that's seeking a new construction home in the future. Buying a new construction home is a significant investment and being vigilant about these red flags can save you from future headaches. Remember through research, clear communication, and attention to details, these are the best tools when navigating the purchase of your new construction home. If you've encountered any red flags that I didn't mention in the video, make sure you comment below. It surely could be helpful for other home buyers that are looking at purchasing a new construction home. So now I wanna see if you were paying attention. What red flag should you be aware of when purchasing a new construction home? A, negative reviews and dissatisfied past clients. B, builder hesitant allowing you to conduct a third party inspection. C, builders that are not transparent and good at communication. Or D, all of the above. The first person to get the answer correctly in the comments below will get a shout out on my next YouTube new construction video. Smash that subscribe button if you wanna join our real estate community. We are currently working on more videos about new construction. Hey, remember if you're thinking about buying a new home, make sure you check out more videos on our channel. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.